Mike Forward for Peace FM and Chet TV, and joining me is Connor from Violet Night. And Connor, it's been about a year since you've been in the studio with us, so what's new with the band? Um, lots is new. I mean, we've had, we just had a new song come out on Friday, and since I was here last, we, we put out a new single in February called Ferrari Red, um, and that, I... I would say it exceeded expectations, but I think that we always, like in our private little world, have really lofty goals. We, you know, um, I don't know. I think it's one of those things where, like, you don't really always express, um, I don't know. You kind of get afraid of perception, you know? And I think with public perception, I think in your inner world, you have to have, like, a really grandoise, like, self perception whether you let that shine to the world or not is totally up to the individual but i think that having that is really important um to being a success so um yeah so we've we've had it i i anticipated the song being successful uh if i'm being totally honest and we but it, and it was um that's not like <laughs> that's not like me being like you know i'm not like uh nostradamus or anything i just really believed in it and uh, the team really believed in it. Um, I remember writing it and laughing because I just, it's so honest. Like, uh, there's a line in Ferrari Red that's like, um, I'm not lying to you. My wallet's made from King K. Rule. And King K. Rule is an alligator who is the villain of Donkey Kong. And it's just funny because I, I, I do have an alligator skin wallet that I was a gift. You couldn't tell it's alligator skin unless you like Google it and stuff. But yeah. anyways, yeah, things have been good. Um, things have been busy. We've been working on what will be our next album. Obviously, just put a new single out. Uh, Vampire came out Friday, and that's the second single off of our new record. And um, the first single was Ferrari Red. And the response has been very strong and very positive. So I'm, I'm really excited to uh, to see, you know, what comes next. And... Uh What's been, uh, what are you guys expecting to be doing over the next year or so? I mean, the next year, um, uh, we're working with, like I said, so we're working with Golden Path Agency now, and they've been uh, really great to us. And I think just we're developing a really great relationship with them or have developed one. And I think it's going to be a lot of, of touring and a lot of shows, having a new record come out next year. Um, more singles coming out within the next year and really just playing as much as humanly possible. Um, you know, when we first toured the U.S. on our debut record, um, Colors of You, we had such a crazy momentum after that. Like, it was, it felt incredible. I don't know. And then we put out the Antiheroes record in the middle of COVID because we couldn't just like, you know, March, 2020, everything shut down and we were like, well, we need to do something. So we released that and much to our delight. Um, if you were the ocean, I would like to drown off that record ended up going to the top 40 and changing things for us further. But getting back to the States is really important to us and also touring Canada and, and just growing that fan base and, uh, yeah, having a new record come out that, um, yeah, it's very, very much far and above, I would say, everything we've, we've done so far. It's very ambitious, but um, I think we, like, you know, in this instance, we've really earned our stripes. Like, as a, as, as a writer, I think I've, I've grown a lot as well. I think as you do anything more and more, you just learn it, how to do it better and more efficiently. But not even efficiently. Like, art is not about efficiency. It's more like, it's more like it's just feels like the band has become like fully realized if that makes sense you know and just stepping back to uh the last few months you guys had some success on sirius right yeah so sirius xm god bless your souls has been playing ferrari red for 32 weeks this week now um it was in the top 40 for nine or ten weeks i mean I'm a. I will. I will unabashedly say I'm a fan of Twenty One Pilots, and to see us on the alternative top forty, right next to them, and like Lincoln Park released a, a B side that Chester had done before he passed, um, and to see us like sandwiched in between those artists is just uh, very cool. Especially coming from Chetwind, it's very like, yeah. I mean, this is awesome. Um, 
it's crazy the impact it's had on us as far as growth online and just engagement and also um there's there's numerous reasons that it's cool and I, i'm really excited i think vampire like we charted to number 25 i think vampire will beat that i i really do i think it's an undeniably good song um it's that chorus is just such an earworm it is i I was actually humming it after i heard it the first time so it's it's definitely got that appeal for sure yeah Uh, are there any certain themes that you're bringing into your new album oh absolutely so should i i don't know if i should name drop the new album. i haven't i haven't revealed the name yet but the name alone like it alludes to Ferrari red and the whole theme, like the color scheme has obviously been red and white and black for everything. Um, that's going to continue. Lyrically speaking, I think it, it's, it's more of a cathartic thing for me with writing, but it definitely, I would say it's the closest to a concept record we've ever had, but if the concept is just my own inner musings, <laughs> it's not like some grand, you know, like, I mean, it's not something like uh, Queens and Night at the Opera or whatever. It's, you know, but um, everything is tied together for sure. Yeah. Do you think your influences have changed in the past year or so with the touring and everything or? Is- yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Like I, I listen to, what do I listen to most right now? I think what's most exciting in, in, in alternative and in rock music right now is people who are trying new things. But I also noticed that there's a lot of artists who are kind of regressing to regressing rather to like a early 2000s, mid 2000s kind of sound. It just seems like that's a thing people are doing. I mean, much like, you know, the 90s were in vogue for a while. Everybody was kind of channeling like uh, or even late 80s, like The Cure. Then everybody was kind of going after Nirvana thing. Now we're seeing the 2000s being a thing again um, for me. When I channel artists, I think I just look at, well, look at any artist that's had a a long, like a lot of longevity to their career and what makes them special and what makes artists forgettable, forgettable. Like if I think if you want to be, because I always ask this question is in a hundred years from right now or 200 years, like who's going to be Beethoven? Who's going to be Mozart? Who is going to actually be remembered? Uh, I mean, amidst the sea of artists that are releasing music now, in contrast to before, you know, there's a substantial amount of people who are releasing music now because it's such a, there's no barrier to entry. You just, most people will just fire up some sort of distribution platform, you know, self-serve and put their music online. Um, there's no labels have, you know, historically previously been the only way to do that. So. But f- as far as for us, I mean, the big influence are always artists like there's generational artists like David Bowie is one who, you know, um, I-, I think with him, it's like the coolest thing about him is he had like his 70s era where he did Ziggy Stardust and he was a bit glam rock and he fit the 70s well. Then the 80s came and he released like Let's Dance, Modern Love, all that. And he was really current with the 80s sound. Then in the 90s, he did, you know, I'm Afraid of Americans or whatever. And that was more 90s sounding. I think for me, what's most inspiring is artists that aren't afraid to change and grow because the ones that don't are the ones that die. And nobody wants to hear the same record 10 times. You're not going to like if you're just chasing money and not chasing your own inner like they say, you should make art for the people in the room that you're with and not for an audience, because that's the way, you know, it's you know, you can truly maybe, you know, grasp some sort of greatness with it. So for us, it's that it's not like that's not to say like, oh, David Bowie is my one and only. I am a big I have big adoration for so many artists. It's ridiculous. Like the list of heroes I have is longer yeah, than like the Bible, to be honest. Not actually, but it's it's long. If you could tour with one group, who would it be with? Living or dead? Uh, I'd have to say living at this living point. at this point. Like right in this moment? Yeah. Hmm. That's tough because Violet Night has a heavy side and a soft side. There's light and there's shade. You know, we could pick soft songs and go out with like Coldplay or something. You know what I mean? But not, not, not at this point, though. I think at this point we're pretty cemented in the alternative world where something like a 21 Pilots uh, would make sense. 
I wouldn't do like I love My Chemical Romance and stuff like that, but I wouldn't do that because when they bring new bands out, those fans they're just like, I've been in those crowds. Yeah, they're not they're there for My Chemical. Yeah, they romance. do not care. Yeah. They do not care. They're like, I'm here to see MCR. I'm not here to see this opening. Or I just saw when I saw Blink, they brought out Turnstile, which was rad because Turnstile is wicked. But they brought out a different artist from the states. I can't remember the name of and. People were not really vibing it. They were just kind of like, okay, can you, you know? And I mean, it's 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 a cool experience for them. But I would say like Twenty One Pilots would be cool. I think, um, because what they're doing is really cool, and their fan base is pretty perceptive. Um, who else would be a good living artist to tour with? Yeah, that's a tough one. You want to kind of get somebody in the Goldilocks zone where they're not like massive stadium big. Because then, no matter who you are, like I just saw the Metallica show in Edmonton with, they had like Pantera opening, and like there were still pe- people not in their seats for Pantera, and like they're <laughs> one of the biggest metal bands of all time. Yeah, you know, and and people are still coming in with beers and popcorns, and I'm like, hmm. So that's a toughie. You'd want you'd want a crowd that is there for the show, and you know, it's like at a fifty five thousand person capacity room, it's going to be different. So. I'd probably lean into something like Twenty One Pilots or even I don't know. Yeah, I'll stick with them for now. But there's other artists I think would be really cool to tour with. Are there any challenges that's coming up over the last year that you maybe didn't expect to run into or were kind of a surprise? Like in what capacity? Um, I don't know. Maybe in terms of crowd or maybe songwriting or. Um. Well, so like songwriting for me is a funny one because I. I've got like a hundred songs for the next album written and I'll choose like nine or 10 tops, just the best ones. Um, and when I write, it's like an all or nothing. Like it's very much like I'll do it 12 hours in a day and I'm obsessive and probably really hard to, um, you know, like I, I almost feel bad for the people in the band, like that will co-write or bounce ideas off because I'm just like, I'm so all the time. That's all I'm thinking about. But I think that the byproduct of like the negative there, the positive is, is that it makes great songs, but you kind of need somebody fussing over over every single detail, like mini like that. Um, It's been a weird year. I mean, I graduated from university and um, yeah, I, I had, you know, we had considerable success with Ferrari and then other challenges. Sometimes it's like, Life challenges are interesting because I think getting put through the ringer in some capacity, you kind of have to be able to flip the script on your own circumstance and use that to write about. And I think that I think that if you become complacent and too comfortable, then good art dies. So I think it's really important to not be comfortable, not be 100 percent happy. I mean, there's a line, obviously, that you don't want to cross. I mean, some people will have it all, and they're still not happy, a la Amy Winehouse, Kurt Cobain, right? So you kind of want to learn how to tread that line. But um, what is it? There's an old saying. It's something to the effect of, like, if you want to be famous just to be famous, and you're, it's not a thing where the art is the most important part, then once you get like all those artists who like skyrocket into fame and then just nosedive right after most of them aren't really in it for the art sake you know what i mean there's not that um they they don't really give it the the you know what it deserves i suppose and i think that it shows because then they they're like a, a flash in the pan whereas the artists who do value that creative process and just the all-encompassing nature of it and you can tell that they're not quite no great artist i've ever met is 100 percent in the right mind <laughs> yeah i mean look at kanye i just saw a video of like he's he's a he's a extreme example but um he's brilliant i mean you can't deny that you know and i would say he's i don't know a lot of guys who hit their 40s kind of lose the spark with music it seems like they get too comfortable but then some of them don't like kanye or like blink 182's new record was great and those guys are all close to 50 now yeah you know so what do you think about uh lincoln park's new singer oh boy <laughs> that's a tough one big fan great band yeah um 
I was reading a little bit of tea. I was sipping some yeah, tea. Yeah, I, I saw some of that. So without getting in too the, deep, just kind of stick to the music yeah. side. What, uh, do you, what do you think of them coming back? I think it's uh, my thought process was imagine being in that band. You've built, you've built it. You've built the field of dreams. You know, you've got this amazing thing happening. You are one of the most listened to bands on Spotify. They're a band that changed frequently throughout their years, which is why I think they stayed relevant. They just didn't try to put out hybrid theory 10 times, much to the dismay of earlier fans. But records like A Thousand Suns, which are more progressive, are like really great too, you know? And I think in a band with that much artistic prowess, you couldn't really just pigeonhole them as putting out the same record 10 times because there's too many creative guys in the mix. Um, it. It's tough because obviously the original drummer's not returning, and as a guitarist myself and singer, um, Brad Delson, the original guitarist, is only being in the studio. That kind of bums me out a bit. Doesn't want to tour either. Um, but I think it's it's good that they're back. I think if if I was in that situation where I had built that kind of a thing, let's say I'm Mike Shinoda, and my writing partner is Chester, who I love dearly, and he decides to take his own life. I think it would be really hard to be in that situation because all those guys want to do it's not about money at this point they're all millionaires it's about wanting to play music because that's what's driving them wanting to make art um there's a lot of yeah so i feel like to them it's like all the power to them because nothing's going to bring chester back um i watched the live stream i thought she did fantastic i think picking a male singer could have been a cyanide pill for the band because he would have just been compared endlessly to Chester. Um, there are many great male singers who I think could have fit the the role as well, but I think it's very surprising to see a female sing with that much. You know, it's it's badass. Like she's very good at what she's doing because Chester does not have an easy voice to yeah. to pull off. So I mean, I'm happy for them. I I I don't see a reason in. Like, I, I, there is a 50-50 online with the hate and the Scientology stuff, and I'm sure we've all read it. So, who knows? Yeah. You know, there's always going to be people. I think it's, I honestly found it kind of humorous, like the whole, she's a Scientologist, we're going to cancel her, we're going to, whatever. Because I think we're at a point now where it's like, even after her apology, it wasn't good enough. And I think some people are going to be upset no matter what. Yeah, for sure. And this whole cancel culture that we live in, I think, is it's on its way out. The pendulum is shifting. And I think the vocal 2% that we have right now, the most vocal people are like a 2% minority. I don't think everybody is thinking in this hypersensitive reactionary state where we want to, you know, put everybody's head on a stake in the town square. I think most people, you know, because that didn't exist when I was in high school, but it was like, if you did something real stupid, you hung your head in shame for a while and you learned a valuable lesson. And I mean, you know, you redemption is a big tenet of, uh, of humanity, like being able to redeem oneself. You know what I mean? As opposed to just being written off. Like there's i I'm not going to name names, but there's, well, I mean, you know, there's a, there's a certain cartoon creator that I quite uh, admire uh, the work of. Um, we, we share the same birthday, actually. Uh, so he had some allegations from women against him, uh, and he was completely cleared of his charges. And despite that happening, he um, wasn't able to return to any of the shows that he created, which I think is a bit of a shame because it, due process, legal process, and then not in the court of public opinion, but in the court of law, I think if, you know, if you're, if you're found to be innocent, then and you are a good upstanding citizen, I don't think your life and dream should be ripped from you because maybe somebody, like let's, it's a, that's tough because then if you're famous and you're really, really successful and you've got tens of hundreds of millions of dollars, who doesn't want a piece of that pie? You know what I mean? Like there's a, so many angles you can take there, but cancel culture has served a purpose that's beneficial because a lot of people who don't deserve to have a platform don't have one because... Some people are foul. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so if you were to give advice to a musician who was just starting off, uh, or maybe to yourself at a younger point, what would that advice be? 
I, I wouldn't change a thing. I think for myself, a lot of our early work was like more, I don't know an artistic way to say it, but I, it was very up my own. You know what I mean? Like I, a lot of navel gazing and just doing whatever I wanted. But from that, you learn what works and what doesn't. And I think it's all part of a process or you can't become good at it. I think my, um, my advice to, to anybody trying to do it now, some of the best advice that I was given was that if it picks at you, if it keeps you up at night, and then it's what you're supposed to be doing. So don't stop. I, I'm very like in that belief system that you should like if you feel it in your heart and, and whatever, like it's it's very like for me, I cannot stop doing this. I just can't like since I was like six, that's all I wanted to do. And it's been Violet Night. You know, we recorded our like people will see it now and be like, oh, you know, they're like, you guys made it. And I'm like, well, it's like summoning Everest. There's always another peak. Yeah, we've had some success and we're very, very grateful and, you know, very thankful for all the people who support us. But I don't think I've ever been one to just sit and be like, OK, I'm comfortable because then like, you know, success just tanks. So um I think it's just about the journey and being steady with it and, and not really giving up and having that work ethic, you know, and being willing to make sacrifices. And, and you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons and make sure, like, if it's what you really want, because it's definitely like they say, it's not easy. You know what I mean? But at the same time, there's no greater drug in the world than being in a studio or being on a stage and having that reaction from the reaction from what you've created. Or the reaction hearing back what you've created for the first time that anyone's ever heard it in that studio gives you yourself is like that eureka, that absolute rush um, that is unlike anything I've ever felt. So um, if you have that in you, don't kid yourself, you're not quitting. But at the same time, if you're kind of on the fence and you kind of want to half-ass it, then just get off the fence and, and throw in the towel because you're going to have to whole ass it if you want to get anywhere. <laughs> Tell me about writing Vampire. Well, Vampire is about a very iconic character. Who do you think it's about? Not a vampire. Female, femme fatale. Have you heard the song as well? No. It's okay. been a couple days, so I can't recall all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, geez. Yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Um, a lot. So, Vampire, I was stranded for... Uh, Christmas because I booked a flight to come visit my family and that wasn't happening because the there was like a raining windy snowstorm in Ontario and uh, my my flight was grounded I felt fortunate because watching the news that year there was like thousands of people at airports in Chicago Mexico not having it and I'm like hey at least I'm at my place in Toronto my roommates are gone so I can be loud and record music and um, I mean, there's a bit of a sadness on Christmas Day when you're all alone. And I think it's just because that's a really a day about connection and family. But Vampire is not a sad song. It's most certainly a sexy song. Kind of rock, kind of rebellious, a little bit of a nature to it. Um, so I'm not going to name the character's name, but it was inspired by a very iconic character. And my one of my streaming services was idling. And when they idle, sometimes they go into screensaver mode. And the, this iconic character shows up. And at that point, prior to this, I was actually, what I'll do sometimes is I will write songs for movies while they're on mute. And I wrote this song uh, with a really, really cool guitar riff. It's called The Worst. And I was watching Die Hard because it's a Christmas movie. Yeah. And so I'm watching it muted, Die Hard 2 actually. And I'm like, you know, doing this. And then after that, I paused it for long enough. It went into that idling mode. And then she came up and I was like, I'm going to write a song for and about girls just like you. And so once, you know, the press release that was sent out um, by our radio fella to uh, stations, it has the, the character's name. But I'm going to keep it close to the chest and see if people online can eventually guess it because... It's a fun one. The mystery box is always better. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'll tell you off air who it's about. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, just a big thank you to everybody that supports us. And like when I come home to be here, uh, it's pretty surreal because everybody's super friendly and it's, it's so welcome to like I welcome anybody. To just, and people always will come up and have chats with me. And I really I do welcome that. It's always nice. Um, 
to know that you know it's making a difference or it's whatever the music is doing and and um yeah i just i'm very thankful for all the support we've received uh i'm really excited about the new album um and i hope that everybody who's listening and and getting the music in this area or wherever you might be listening to this on youtube or whatever it's just like it means the absolute world to us to have people supporting us and um we've got huge ambitions and i really think that uh yeah i think that we're going to get to exactly where we want to be it's just a matter of time and uh where can people follow you on social media and listen to your music so anywhere you stream music spotify apple music amazon music title anything pandora deezer whatever all of it has uh, our entire catalog including the hot new single vampire and um our at or at like uh our tag on instagram or um TikTok or Facebook is just at Violet Night Music. On Facebook, it's just Violet Night. And I'll say this because this is way too common where people think I said Violent Night. And that's the David Harbour movie. We are, we, which is ridiculous because I've even seen it like, I don't know, I've seen it so many times, even for people who are like fans of ours, like, oh, I love Violent Night. And I'm like, if we were like a symphonic black metal band, maybe yeah. we actually can. Anyway, so Violet like the color purple, night like nighttime. So just Violet Night on Facebook or Instagram, Violet Night or the at Violet Night Music, um, TikTok, you know, and listen wherever you listen, YouTube, whatever. Um, and we really appreciate that. It goes a long way. And like or Violet Night Music dot com. You can go for merch, uh, all the latest and greatest. And yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, good luck in the next year. And, of course, keep us in touch with new releases and uh, what you guys are up to. All right. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.